Hi everyone, my name is Lindy. Um, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself. My name is Joel Ross. Uh, do I say what I do? Yeah. <laughs> my name is Joel Ross. I'm a musician, vibraphonist, uh, piano player, drummer, composer. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Okay. <laughs> so I kind of want to get into like how you started. Like, so how did you get into music? Uh, I have a twin brother, and um, what? Yeah, You're a twin. Uh, wow. So I'm from Chicago. Grew up okay. going to church every week, and uh, I guess early on, my brother and I started beating on a bunch of stuff around the house. And uh, one of our godparents played drums at the church. Our godfather played drums, so I guess we we were watching him, and we got to beating on stuff. So our parents bought us these little drum sets when we were like two or three years old. So that's how we started, and we've been playing, playing drums ever since then. Wow, that's so cool. I swear, like, Americans have, like, the best kind of backstories about <laughs> life and music. That just sounds so <laughs> inspirational. It needs to be in a freaking movie. Um, but that's so cool. So how did you know you kind of, like, had a gift and, like, wanted to, I guess, push it further and, like, try other instruments out? Ah. Uh. I, would, I wouldn't say I, I necessarily realized I had a gift per se. It was just, I always knew, it was just like, I knew I wanted to play music. Just mm. kind of, I like to do that. And I always had my brother Josh to, to do it with. So, nice. and I guess my, my parents naturally encouraged it from so long ago. I don't remember ever not doing it. So that was just the thing that we did. And we'd get to church and we'd be fight each other, trying to play drums the next week. Eventually they set it up so we'd play each <laughs> And uh, I didn't, I, I didn't really want to play vibes at first. We were playing drums and mm -hmm. then we got to fifth grade and we were about 10 years old. And um, one of us had to play the mallet instrument. See, he made me do it because I'm the yeah. younger twin. Aww. And uh, that same year we auditioned, Chicago has some all city bands. And so we did the concert band and I was playing like xylophone and stuff in there. And then we also auditioned for the jazz band. And we both auditioned on drums, but they suggested that I play the vibes. And I didn't, I didn't want to do that, but my dad and the teacher strongly, strongly insisted that I do it. So I did Aww. it reluctantly at first, but I, I realized I picked it up pretty naturally and it was still a way to be able to play. And so I guess that just became what it is, my main, I guess my main instrument that I was playing for a while. But I've always, mm -hmm. I didn't start playing piano for real until like senior year of high school, but I always had some type of love for it. And I still love the drums. And so it was always, I was always playing that on the side, but the vibes really became my main instrument. Yeah, that's so crazy. So do you feel like everything just kind of was like a natural evolution? I mean, apart from having been encouraged <laughs> to play vibes, but like apart from that, do you feel like everything was kind of like a natural evolution into how you picked up other instruments or was it like a battle? No, it was pretty natural. I mean, we always had a piano at the crib mm -hmm. and, and drums. So those were always there. And then once they bought me vibes, I didn't really want to practice vibes too much when I was at home because I had to do it so much outside of home. So I get yeah. really, really figure out things on the piano and play drums and go back and forth with my brother on that. So there was, uh, I, there was always time placed on all the, all those main instruments. Yeah. So um, in terms of like discipline, like how did that build up? Like having a routine and like, like was that forced or was it something that you just kind of, wanted to do uh at home it was never forced i mean my my father would strongly suggest that we should practice but i i never really needed much incentive to play you know i would i would always naturally inquisitive so i would if i heard something or was trying to think of something i would go to the piano a lot of a lot of my practicing happened on the piano and the drums less less wow. on the box i had to be encouraged to <laughs> practice vibes but there was so much, I, when I went to high school, especially, like we went to a, a public arts high school mm -hmm. and we had a conservatory mm -hmm. towards the end of the day. So from, from eight to two, it was like regular classes and then two to five, we had conservatory. And a large part of that was playing, yeah, I know. <laughs> what was that? That's, wow, okay, yeah. But a large part of that was practicing the vibes and playing yeah. the vibes and ensembles and we had percussion classes where we were doing scales and stuff. So. I had that every day. So yeah, 
I guess in a way that was forced, but that, those were those classes. So when I got home, I would be more just trying different things out, learning, learning more about theory and stuff mm. like that. So there was a mix of having that dedicated, dedicated rote practice and then going home and just working things out and being a little more. Yeah. Imaginative. Wow. No, that's but so cool. I've never, I've never been like a very diligent, like I'm a practice these skills for it, or like I, I didn't do that unless I had to have it ready. Yeah. For something, you know? Oh, okay, good. I feel normal. Oh, I swear you see all these documentaries and it's like these people are so crazy and like so involved. And I mean, I guess some people are kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> But don't you feel like that happens for you when it's like you have an idea and you just kind of have to see it through? Yeah, that's what it is. I that's so I think when I'm watching these documentaries and seeing these people, I'm realizing they're doing that because they're trying to get to that specific thing. Mm. And for me, that happens. I will like play some chords like for like three hours, just just sitting and trying to figure that out. That's my version of that. Like just really trying to figure out all right, is this the way that it goes? No, nah, I'm not feeling that. Or I'll sit at the drums and like really practice this rhythm, trying to really get it because I'm naturally not competitive, but just like, I, I, I want to get that. I want to get the stuff together. So it's, it's a natural, yeah. I need to be working on this until I got it, until I understand it. I'm really big on making sure that I understand things mentally. Wow. Wow. That's so good. Wow. <laughs> okay no this is honestly just making me think because i feel like i don't know okay anyway we'll get to that later um but in terms of like finding your voice like what what has that been like Uh, i mean i have naturally especially in jazz i I was never about like the transcribing folks doing whole yeah because i feel like that's like just taking somebody else's words i was always Mm -hmm. big on playing what I was hearing and playing what I wanted to play on the vibes. And there would be different licks and stuff that I would transcribe, but never like full things. And I would always take those things and like, you know, play these licks and, and really work with them to try to understand the the concepts and the theories behind them so that I could break them apart and do what I wanted to do with them. So pretty early on, it was about, I guess, developing my own, my own voice and Mm -hmm. as my ear grew stronger through school and especially once I got to college I I recognized what I what I really liked to sound like and what I wanted to sound like and the more facility that I get on the instrument and and the more music that I listen to the more I realize what I want to sound like and yeah I guess the more I practice things the more I get in tune with how I want to sound you know wow that's so beautiful you're literally saying all the right things (laughs) You really are. Um, so, okay, I guess, okay, so do you, do you think that some of, like, your influences have kind of impacted your music in a way that, like, there's, like, maybe little traces of them, or do you feel like you've kind of broken a, away from that? Oh, no, no, without a doubt. All my, I, I think, I personally think all my influences are in my playing, I mean, just people like Miles or Train, Herbie Hancock, mm-hmm. I think they're there. People who are still alive, my, my teacher, Stefan Harris, I think he's he's most certainly still there. Um, his trumpeter, Ambrose Akinmusery, I his compositional process and the way he runs his band is still there. But I think, I think because I play the vibes, which is such a different instrument, people don't associate those those sound so much in my playing it, i guess mm. it's hard to it's harder than if i was a saxophone player playing john coltrane yeah you know, for it sure. translates differently to to the vibes and i guess taking from all these different people translates into something where people think it's a i have such this unique thing going on but i'm like I, i'm coming straight out of this i'm coming straight out of that i'm really just copying this that's how i feel yeah. but i think so i think all these influences are certainly there, but it's the way that they're all coming together as a conglomerate that like comes out as some different type of mixing pot or something. You know? Yeah. I, wow. think, I think something else. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really cool. Honestly, that is. Um, okay. So I feel like with that, I guess you've kind of different, differentiated yourself. Okay. English is escaping me today, but you've kind of set yourself apart. Um, and do you feel do you feel like everyone kind of can recognize that? Do you recognize that? And you stand in your own and your own sound? I think I have my own sound. I, I, I think so. And I, I think, think people so. notice that. It's apparently, 
I'm doing something different rhythmically. I, I don't know. That's I guess so. But you know, I couldn't explain what I'm doing. That's so. Yeah, different. I get that. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. I like that you're getting feedback too. I honestly listening. Okay, wait. Let me just finish the questions I have because I want to talk about your album, but I want that to be like the last kind of segment. Um. So, oh yeah. So, do you actually think you? have been successful in like all that you've done so far and like how do you personally like measure success oh i think i've been successful just by having the ability to play music Mm -hmm. and now having the ability to make money from playing music and you know sustain some type of living i I would Mm. think that's successful that's enough for me oh that's good that's good you feel like your music is doing anything like how in class we keep talking about like saying something and adding you think that it's doing something from the feedback that I received from people, I, I think so. I I don't know if I would say that's been a goal or not. Mm-hmm. You know, I just I'm just creating and putting this stuff out there, but it's been pretty positively well received, and it seems to. I know music does something. Specific music that I listen to can do something for me, and I, I yeah, think that my music does something for people, and that's always good. good. Yay! No, it it does. Like it's it's really good. I feel like your music is you. <laughs> like with this album like I was just like I feel like I got to know you but like obviously I, I don't know you that well but I was just like okay this is who he is I literally had like the perfect word to describe it but like it literally is not a thing anymore but <laughs> it was so good like it really was good and I was like oh my word like I'm really enjoying this like <laughs> not, not that I was expecting not no, to enjoy no, it I but it. I was like whoa like this is this is really good. Like I had a few favorites. I wrote them down. I don't know where I put them, but like, no, it was, it was really good. It was really good. Thank so you. how did you even start with the album? Like just that process and creation and like uh, composing, like how, how does that start and happen? Um, well, this is the second album with this group. I mean, there's a different bass player, but for the most part, it's the same group. And mm-hmm. We released our first album in 2019, but we recorded that in 2016. So mm-hmm. when it released, everybody in the band was like, "Yeah, now nah, we sound too young. This is too old. We gotta, <laughs> we, gotta <laughs> we gotta get up to date real quick." Uh, so this album is just basically from releasing that first record. We've got more opportunities to play and to tour and stuff, and play a lot mm-hmm. as a group and really grow some more. So this album is just you know kind of just what we've been doing and it's we we've matured as people and as a band so i think we got we're definitely getting closer to what i would like to present as a just to present musically and as a group you know it's not i don't think of it as my band per se it's just Mm. i get all these people together and we're making music and we're doing this and i'm just glad that we're getting closer and there's there has there's less discussion about the music we're able to just get together look at the parts and then make some music from it and so that's what this record is and then you know just making music with my friends so (laughs) yeah that sounds so cool so can you kind of be specific and like kind of draw into music so would you like write down a few parts or like some ideas you have and kind of just bring it and everyone like goes off um so like the first tune dream is actually the drummer song Mm -hmm. and we recorded one of his songs on the first record too and I tell them in general, just, you know, bring in music. I don't, it doesn't always have to be my, my tunes. Um, mm-hmm. Though at this point, I think I do write specifically for them. So a lot of the music that I bring in that is, is envisioning them, but I also encourage them to do that. So we played one of his songs, but I'll usually, I mean, what tends to happen is I write a bunch of music. I, I just write a bunch of stuff and, mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll bring it to them and we'll try some stuff. What usually happens is I bring it in. Some things click immediately, but a lot of the music we have to like keep playing and keep running. And what was happening for this music is because it's been, I guess, over a year, maybe two years now that we were playing it. So when we'd have gigs, we would run some of the music in sound check and then not play it for like two months on an actual gig, but just continually, continually be running the stuff in sound check and eventually start to play more and more of the stuff on gigs. Mm-hmm. I'm really big on figuring out where songs go in the set and like the mood of the song and how they how they should be used and really crafting a set. So 
Um, but yeah, I, I guess in specifically, yeah, I would write some music, bring it in, and we practice it and sound check. Mm-hmm. Uh, before the record, we had a big tour in, I guess we had a couple of tours. We had a tour in the summer, and then we had a tour in uh, October in Asia, and then another one in Europe in November. And the one in nice. November, the one in November was with the band that I recorded with, and that was really, really when we were like trying to get the music together, figure out different things, do different mm. things with the music, and then we took it to the studio, and we had one more rehearsal, just or oh, one more gig, to really just get it under our fingers, and then we just went in and. By that time, we knew it well enough so that we could just come in. And I don't like to really do more than like one take. Like okay. If, if we, I don't, cause I don't, I don't care about mistakes per se. Like if we play okay. the, if we play the forms and stuff correctly, uh, and most of the melodies, I'm, I'm like, I'm cool. I'm whatever. I don't really care about what your solo sounds like either. So that, <laughs> that can rub some of them the wrong way, but we got through it. And so, but yeah, we went in, especially for the first half of the record, we just played it the way we would perform it. You know, mm-hmm. and, but that's the energy that I wanted. And although they didn't necessarily agree with that method, they trusted me and, and mm. just you know, let that happen. And it came out the way that I was, I wanted it to. And I, I, th- I guess they're cool with it. <laughs> but, um, no, yeah, it's, it's great, honestly. It's, it's really great. So even in like you guys touring and stuff like that, okay, wait, number one, I want to ask in terms of like you saying like the first one was the drummer song. Um, how does that kind of work if it's like under your name like do you guys then create albums for like each person within the band like um so it's it's his composition and the album is released under my name but like he Mm -hmm. gets the publishing rights for for that song oh okay oh man oh man okay that makes sense (laughs) oh wow oh music Okay, cool. So in terms of like touring and stuff like that, like how, how, how did that feel? Like, what is that experience like playing for different crowds? You know, do you expect anything, you know, being uh, in Asia and like, how does that feel? I don't expect anything from the crowd. I'm purely, mm-hmm. I'm purely excited to be touring with, for the ability to make music every night with them so that we can keep, continue to try new things and grow as a group. That's really mm-hmm. my main concern. I, it's, it could sound messed up, but I could care less about the audience to to a degree. It's, it's, <laughs> no, I, that's good. That's good. You know, I definitely gauge the audience's reaction, and I, it lets me know you know like what's what's well received and what's not. But my my main concern is like the music that we're making on stage, and yeah. really being in tune with each other. Wow, mm, sounds so good. So, how did you guys find each other? Like, how did this like happen? <laughs> I met almost everybody in the band in high school or my first year okay. in college. Yeah, nice. I met the piano player, Jeremy Corrin, uh, I guess junior year. There's a there's a program called the Monk Institute, which is, I guess now it's the uh, Herbie Hancock Institute. Uh, they did like high school peer-to-peer tours where they would take some students or a, a band from, from a high school to another city and do like a, a little tour in the city going to different schools. So. Mm-hmm. My junior year or my senior year, I went to LA and met him. Uh, we also did this program, Young Arts, together. Where we nice. Went, the same type of thing where we went to Miami and played together for a week. So I met him. We were cool. I knew I was going to be playing with him in the future. I met Kanoa, the bassist. My first year of college, I did the Brubeck Institute in California. And mm-hmm. we went to the Monterey Jazz Festival, Next Gen Jazz Festival. I think they're kind of the same thing. That's why mm-hmm. I already knew about her from online, but I, I met her for the first time. I knew she was killing. Um, I also met the drummer, Jeremy Dutton, through my friend James Francis, who I met during those monk tours, like junior year. Um, mm-hmm. I met him. I went down to Houston, played with them my first year of college. Also, I knew Jeremy when I moved to New York. They were still going to new school, so you know we were close. Um, and then I finally met Emmanuel once I moved to New York, started the band. He came to one of our gigs and then we mm-hmm. from there we like did a session and then we were like, Yeah, this is we that's it. Yeah, we we're good. And so that was <laughs> the band. And then there's been a like a few personnel changes. Some people left New York, we got a different bass player, but it was kind of the same story with everybody. I met them through these different camps or or, mm. or 
gigs and everything. So we met every, wow. every jazz education as a big part of it now, I guess. <laughs> wow, that's really cool. Wow. And this is this just sounds so like organic. Like it really does. That's really cool. Wow. Okay, cool. This is interesting. I don't know. I'm just trying to think that like kind of the community that you found, you know, going everywhere and doing what you did. And like now, I guess the community, I'm just trying to see that's forming or not forming. You know, I, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know how you feel, but I, I don't necessarily feel like a community, you know, where we are currently studying. And I just, I guess finding that, that kind of space, safe space is to kind of share and like create with other people kind of isn't the culture there. I, so. I mean, I, I think the community built not in school, but through school, through these different opportunities. I met these people and then I stayed okay. in touch with them outside of it. You know, like I met, okay. met my man, James, but also like this fluid Elena Pender Hughes, like we didn't go to school together, but through these things, we came to like the gen conference or, or we mm. met a festival and then we would rap and then, you know, we'd be in touch. Me and James, although we went to school in different places, we would be sending each other music and stuff like that. And, and I, you know, I just kept in touch with everybody. And when I was going to school in California and everybody started going to school in New York, I was like, ah, I can't wait <laughs> to get out there. And just uh, a lot yeah. of my peers were inspirations to me. I was, I wanted to play with them. They were inspiring me to, to want to make sure I could hang once I got out here. So th yeah. that was another part of it. And just keeping in touch with people and, and just paying attention to what's happening so that once I got out to the city, I wasn't dependent on school to create these communities, but just knowing okay. people and having my, having these people and my friends to, to contact, you know. Wow. Okay, that's, that's honestly a good way to counter what I said. I think that's a good way to look at it as well. Mm -hmm. That really is. Um okay let's see okay so how do you feel about just collaboration in general like working with other people how do you even start that process is it off of vibes or if it's like you know like how does that happen i prefer collaboration I, it's much easier if i have somebody else's ideas to bounce off of i can you know i can think of things on my own but i would much rather i i, I like to just ask somebody what they're thinking and then and then work with that and in, in wow. anything, make, making songs or just improvising or whatever. It's, mm -hmm. it's much easier for me to make music based off of that type of collaborative process, you know. Wow. Are you not, like, scared? Nah. <laughs> you don't care. Like, you're just, like, it is what it is. Like, wow. Yeah, no, I don't, okay. I don't, I don't know. Scared of what? Scared of like, I don't know, man. Like, are you just not fearful? <laughs> I just feel like when it comes to things like that, it's just like you're sharing like a part of you that's just so vulnerable. And I, I, I feel that that's so scary because it's again, trusting, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, it's, I, I'm not afraid of that. that you know, okay. I, you might, we might be unsure of things, but I don't think there's a need to fear it, you know? Fear okay. doesn't help anything. You it know, doesn't be right. You, there can be uncertainty. You know, you okay. can be unsure of how something's gonna come off. And I'm still unsure of a lot of things. I got a lot of projects, so I'm like, I don't I don't really know how it's gonna come together. I don't know if this will work, you know. Mm -hmm. And you can't be afraid of failure. It just yeah. failure just lets you know what does and doesn't work, you know. That's and true. I, I'm oh. just big on figuring out figuring out what needs to be figured out. If something doesn't work, understand why, understand what can change yeah so in terms of collaboration i mean you're two people two or however many people coming together trying to do something together um i think fear is an ego thing because you're you're worried about yourself and how you're coming into it instead of just mm. focusing on what I'm you're trying, trying to, to do yeah what you're trying to create once yeah. you take yourself out of it and just worry about what you're doing it opens the door for for that is know, so true that's worrisome <laughs> creation yeah Oh, okay. That is so true. Okay. I'll try take myself out of it. That's, that's good advice. I swear. It's just so like, I feel I, I was actually, I think it was Alicia Keys and she was just talking about how she preferred to work alone in the beginning. Like now she's so down for collaboration, but she just like lock herself in a room and come back with stuff and be like, this is what I did. And you know, and I'm just like, I get that, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. I, I feel like, again, 
I mean, I guess now since I'm, I guess now like I'm understanding a bit more just kind of what music is like, this is, it's more than just like being right or sounding good or, or being like, it's so much more, but I, I, I guess like that, that initial kind of step into standing into your own, that's, I don't know, for me, that's just like scary. Yeah. I mean, that's I guess so there scary. is, there is a lot more that goes into it. Like you're dealing with people who might not be timely, who you might be trying to you're like, yo, are you doing your part? Is it, you know, mm. There's that. And so, I guess that can inform inform your decisions in the future, like if you want to work with somebody or not. But you know, in oh, the yeah. moment, you gotta just work with work Go with what it. you got. You know. Okay. Yeah, that is true. So, how do you feel about just this whole journey so far? Has it been difficult? Like, have you, like, has it been touch and go? Like, how's that been for you? Ah, it's, it's been cool. Now, you know, I'm just. It's been flowing. <laughs> I'm very in the moment with it. So it's just like whatever happens next is happening next. And I am so happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> I am so happy for you. That's a good way to look at it. Um, okay, let me see. I have a few more. Oh, okay. So in terms of like independent artists and signed artists, like what's your take on it? Like that whole kind of, I guess, channel which you kind of produce music like how do you feel about someone like being signed and just being an independent artist i mean i before i was signed i was an independent artist so it's like it's what it is um it's we i, I think we need more power as artists as mm -hmm. independent artists um it's just it's difficult i mean i I tr getting signed, you know, there was it's like what Darius was saying, there were a lot of people telling me what not to let happen. And, you mm. know, a lot of people were right here and a lot of people just trying to look out. Yeah. Just trying to retain, you know, what we were saying, trying to retain some type of power. Yeah. Over an autonomy over my, myself, but there are also some things I had to give up. You yeah. Know, you know, like they, they, they technically own my name. They can use my my name and my likeness, however they see yeah. it, like things like that. Uh, I see it as a business thing. Same thing I was looking at with the school. As of now, I'm a young, relatively still unknown artist. Yeah. And they have money and name. Mm. So I can use them, grow my thing, and then revisit the contract talks when I when it's when it's appropriate and move from there. Yeah. So I can get, get a little more leverage and get a little more power. But I don't want to be signed. I don't want to be signing my life away. You know, it's, it's yeah. um, trying to figure out. I mean, as of now, I'm trying to do what I can for my career so I can get to a position to have some type of power and eventually be able to help other artists and other people. Yeah. No, I, I get that. I get that. Yeah. So how do you feel about going forward? Like, what do you, what do you uh, want out of this? You know, what more? Being signed? no like not even being signed just like music like you know what more do you want out of this oh i i got a bunch of <laughs> project ideas i'm trying to record this music and keep keep making some music with different people that's nice. that's, that's where i'm at as of now i'm just i got a lot of ideas i'm trying to get out you know? mm -hmm. okay no that's cool that's cool well i really enjoyed the album and thanks for chatting with me Thank what's you. your favorite one i want to oh. quickly i'm scrolling on my phone now. i'm gonna go to the album what's your favorite one probably when my head is cold okay i'm gonna have to listen to them again but gator's gift fave gato. Oh, how, do, how do i say it? gato like the cat in spanish gato 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 mm -hmm. okay gato gato's gift is like a fave but more like listen just having that as like a preview was everything. I was hanging on to more for like <laughs> ever. I was like, okay, when's the next like part of this album coming? It was so good. Thank you. No, this was like so good. I really enjoyed it. Like, honestly, I hope people listen to this some more. And I'm excited to see what happens with your career. I think you're really going to go far, like really, really far. Thank you. I appreciate it.